Okay, our full study, the 24th recording, 1 Corinthians 3.18, let no man deceive himself. Now, we usually have a warning against deceiving others. When was the last time you heard a message about deceiving yourself? Imagine conning yourself, lying to yourself, and yet it's capable. We are capable of thinking ourselves more than what we are. We are capable of lying to ourselves that we're doing just fine in the Lord. And the Lord's like, no, you're not. We should get back. We should stop backfiring. Let's repent. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, worldly wise, it's one of the characters in uh, Pilgrim's Progress, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So, wise men do not do well with God in the ministry. They must become fools to the world to be usable to God. When a man gets saved, becomes born again, he becomes a new creature. That life before, that, that worldliness is not usable to God. It's a sin. And then when you get these people, Christians, who deceive themselves, oh, I, I am just so great, I am just so wonderful. Look what I know. Get back to a fool. Now, we've gone, this is 170, hundred number 170 fool we're doing in the Bible right now. And except for two or three occasions, the fool has been a sinner He's unwise, he's unprudent, he's not well in God. And God says, listen, if you're too headstrong, you're too prideful, and you lie to yourself, get back to being a fool. Now, after 169 fools in the Bible, God says, when you're worldly wise, you're worse than a fool. And that's the way the church is going today. The church is going worldly wise. Get back to foolishness. Get back to what we talked about last night. Go out there and stand. Go out there and knock. Go out there and pass out. Go out there and reach the world by the foolishness. And somebody like, hey, what, you, what you're doing is foolish, but not the message. And what God says is, what you're doing right now, the world likes, the world's entertained. But even your message. Even you are being deceived. Because you don't have the gospel. You think you got the gospel. You think you're witnessing to the, to the lost people. You're not. You're deceiving yourself. And when you deceive yourself. And you're having others buy into your deceiving of yourself. You deceive them. I hope I didn't lose you on that. Hey, it's harsh to deceive others. But if you can deceive yourself. And you have a following? Man, the blind following the blind that are blind on top of being blind. 19. Don't need to go far. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. Nuclear physics. God's like, yeah. The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. Oh, look, we can take a heart out of a man and replace it with another heart. We can do organ transplants. God's like, yeah. And then you, you say you come from monkeys. We're going to get the whole world together in unity, kumbaya, and, and have a, a, a cola and meet at a, at a kingdom. God says, yeah, and you're going to do it without me. And then when you die, you rejected me. And everything that you know, without me, you're going to die and go into hell. Foolishness. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He has taken the wise in their own craftiness. You're too wise for yourself. Oh, great. You, you know about a big bang that no one knows about. Brilliant. Yeah, I know God. I'm a child of God, my creator. And he is recorded by what he has done. What he has witnessed. What he has testified in my life. As being so. So man's wisdom, science, education, technology, etc. 
man's great boast, God says, oh, that's so foolish. Oh. Angels, will you sing up a, will you do a choir on the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died for them people? Angels, will you rejoice when one man will repent of his sins and get right? 1 Corinthians 4.10 a lot of people think they're pleasing God. God's up there like, oh, well, big deal. Let's praise Jesus. Ye, uh, we are fool for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Man, he is just badgering the Corinthians. They're so great. They're so wonderful. Paul, you're so, look at you, Paul. you got a miserable life. You ain't got no life. You're, you, you're in jail. You, you've been persecuted you get stoned people hate you uh, but look at us now if you want to study the lad to see in church a study first Corinthians that's churches today look how great I am look how wonderful God has got to be pleased with how wonderful we are you're carnal you got a man sleeping with his his father's his wife and you're like oh it's so great come on in with fellowship you got, Paul is the greatest. No, Paul is great. No, this preacher is the greatest. No, we like this preacher. We like this school. Well, we like this university. Well, I go to this seminary. I've been to this place. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, and we are despised. And that's really true of the, of the apostles. Realize, except for John, all the apostles died a violent death. Hanging, having their bodies ripped apart, being beheaded, crucified on a cross, but upside down, but crucified. It's sarcasm. People have said sarcasm is, 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 a, is a law, is a sin. Paul is using sarcasm. And it's recorded in scriptures. Paul was in no way a fool, but the Corinthians are fool. And to go to the study of the fools that the Corinthians are, we would have to go and study. We would have to look at the 16 chapters of the foolishness. And if you could go online, find a King James Bible outline of the book of Corinthians and the troubles and problems that they're having, that would be most healthy because there are sexual, there are people taking people, Christians taking Christians to court. They are fighting, they are like I said, here, the one that started the church, well, he ain't that good. It's ridiculous. So Paul said, yeah, I'm foolish, but you're more. And God will weigh it out. God will show at the judgment seat of Christ who was foolish and who wasn't. So don't be surprised if you are if you who are doing right in the, in the word are being called a fool by carnal Christians. It's in the Bible. Uh, chapter 15, verse 36. And I have done it. I have to send it off. But I have gone ahead to the study that I wanted to do. 1536. Let you guys know. I got Maybe today or tomorrow I got to send it off and pay for it. I have extended the full study to folly. And I believe there was 37 folly found the King James Bible. Lord willing, we're going to look at them. Lord willing, if you're listening to this, I ask you to pray. I'm going to try to put this in book form. I'm going to try, I have it here, a spire bound book here. I'm going, to, I'm going to offer it for people who want it, but I'm going to try to get it in like a booklet. But pray for that. Alright. Uh, commercial over. First Corinthians you didn't think you were going to get a commercial from me, did you? 1536. Thou fool. Aw. How? You offended me, Paul. Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. In verse 36, but some men say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? With that question, Paul says, you ought to know better, you fool. You do not understand. You do not know. You should have. 
And it would give us to the conclusion that Paul has spoken to the Corinthians about this. Because Paul is not a man to go throwing out the word fool. He would even say in some of his books, I would not have you be ignorant. I want you to know. But it, it applies here, the implication is Paul has taught the Corinthians, and they come up with a question probably he's talked about, he's a doubtful. And the question is about the resurrection. Now at this point in time, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has happened. He's shown up to over 400 people. He's been resurrected or called up to heaven in Acts chapter 1. And there are people teaching right now, yet yeah, the resurrection, the third part of the gospel, Jesus Christ has suffered and died according to Scripture. And he's been buried. And he arose again the third day according to scripture. Now that's been that's being taught by the disciples, by the right Christians. And then you'll find out in the studies of the book of the Bible, there are people preaching that the resurrection has already happened for the church. And you missed it. Paul rebukes that. And then there are people who report there is no resurrection. The ways of the Sadducees. There is no resurrection. And that true is wrong. Because Paul says if there's no resurrection, then eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die and go to hell. And that there is a resurrection of Jesus, resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord one day to get a brand new body. So, Paul's calling people who don't know fools. And I'm going to throw out there that he's not just throwing that you're a fool. Is They've probably been taught. But, have we ever dealt with people who've been taught and still don't get it? Yeah, we've been there. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11.16 2 Corinthians 11.16 My page in my Bible stick. 11.16 I say again, let no man think me as a fool. There it goes again. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. Boasting is a sin. Boasting is pride. That's a sin. Being proud is a sin. Look at how great our church is. Look how great I am. Look what I did this, this weekend. And, and Jesus said, here as a, as a, as the scribes and the Pharisees that stand in the street corner and blow the trumpet. Da, 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 look at us! Look how great we are! Paul says, I'm going to do a little boasting. That's foolish. It's a sin, but let me do a little boasting. That's what he's going to do. He's going to boast saying that's what fools do. Fools boast. Fools have pride. And he says, you know what? Let me do it for a little bit. Let me teach you a good lesson by my boasting. The Corinthians are boasting, are, wow, look how great we are, such as the Laodicean church age. You say, well, get off the Laodicean church age. No, because this is the church age I am. And like Jeremiah, they don't like it, but it's the truth. So, Paul proclaims boasting is pride, proud, it's a sin. And Paul's like, let me counter what you guys are doing, but let me counteract what you're doing by what me what I'm going to do. You're boasting? Well, let me boast a little bit. You know, and then he goes through all the perils he's going through, 23, 25, to 26. How are you guys doing? 2 Corinthians eleven seventeen. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in the confidence of boasting. I'm going to boast. I'm going to speak from myself and not from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put forth man's point of view, and that's foolish. So Paul said, I'm going to use a little boasting here. Let me make a little side note. When I boast that I'm going to do, it's a sin and it's not of the Holy Ghost. Wow. So by the scriptures, when we pat ourselves on the back, we open our big mouth, our tongues that flap of the, of the smells and the fire of hell, James said, 
how great I am is not of the Holy Spirit. You need to get that. Paul calls it foolish. That's 175 fools in the Bible so far. 2 Corinthians 11, 19. For ye suffer foolish, excuse me, you suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Ye are so profoundly wise as able to discern that I am a fool, Paul. Well, it would be dishonorable to you as wise men to fall out with a fool. You will therefore gladly bear with his and foolishness because of your own profound wisdom. What did Paul just say? You're a smart aleck and you don't know nothing. You dare to compare me, Paul, to somebody? Paul has under his belt churches that he has started. He has suffered for the word of God. He, has, How many Corinthians have written books that went into the Holy Bible? Thirteen of Paul's writings are in our Bible. And I'm not being this Paul onlyism, but the subject is Paul. And the people of the church have gotten so foolish that, Paul, you're just worthless, you're just vile. And the opposite opposing of that is spoken about as the, um, the created, oh, boy. Latin, not Latin, uh, Nickelodeons, Nickelodeons, excuse me, not Nickelodeons, Nickelodeons, when the pious overlords of the shepherds of the flock look how great we are look how wonderful we are you guys are so low you guys can't do nothing without us that's in the church age today but what paul is saying is you got a group of people in the church that are being what god hates and what's god hate the nicolaitan raising yourself above Listen, these people would have not had a foundation without God sending Paul to them. Israel did that in the wilderness. They griped and complained, griped and complained. And Moses, who do you think you are? Aaron, who do you think you are? It gets me a laugh when the earth swallows up that camp and then closes itself back up. They have the nerve, I think it's like eight verses later, Moses and Aaron, you killed the children. You mean Moses and Aaron opened up the earth? Really? Come on. 11.21 I speak as concerning reproach by the Corinthians. As though we had been weak, how be it? Wherein soever my any bit. Yeah. How be it, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. I'm going to throw a little sin here, parentheses. I'm going to do a little boasting again. That's a sin. And yet, when Paul brags about what he has done, he is absolutely telling the truth. But he's got the same kind of heart the Corinthians had. Look how great we are. Paul's like, really great? Let me show you my credentials. Now, I believe this would be a lot different from, you know, the pastor, has anybody got a testimony? Yeah, I want to thank the Lord for doing this this week. I want to thank the Lord for helping me to do or... But Paul is bad. Paul is... Your boasting versus my boasting. You think you're so great. Well, let me show you how great you are. And Paul says, I'm being foolish. And yet what we finish reading in chapter 11 is a great example of what Paul is and how little the Corinthians were. And Paul says it's a sin, but I don't know if it's going to be a sin at the judgment seat of Christ because that's what he did. He is a wonderful testimony next to Jesus Christ. 
of what a Christian should do. And I am not raising Paul up as, you know, only what Paul says. I don't do that. Don't I've been accused of that. I, no. Paul is remarkably one of the greater Christians of the Bible. But I'm not going to lift him above Jesus Christ, and I'm not going to put him where God is on the throne, but these Corinthians don't have a right, and there are preachers out there I've dealt with, they think they're Paul. How dare you rebuke me? I'm the office of the... Touch not the God's anointed. Well, that's for Israel, first of all. And you're sinning against God, and you got the pride, and I'm trying to help you out. Thank you very much. I'll just let you go and argue with God. And that's what Paul's doing with the people here. You know, you're sinning against God. I'm going to try to help you out. And it's foolishness. I'm glad there's no foolishness in heaven. 1121. Are they Hebrews? So are they. So am I. I'm a Hebrew. Are they of Israelite? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant. Now, I don't think Paul is saying it like that. I don't think Paul is saying that at all. I, he says, are you ministers of Christ? I speak as both. Well. I am more. I am more. I think I skipped the verse. Let's go back. Uh, Verse 13. Yeah, I speak full. All right, so... 23, I speak as a fool. Again, I, I'm boasting. I'm being foolish. Foolishness is bragging about yourself. It's not how great you are. It's how great God is. And when you're called upon to have a testimony, it should be not with you, but what Christ has done through you. God was able to use me to get these gospel tracts out. Jesus Christ gave me the Holy Spirit enough to deal and talk with this man. Through the word of God, I was able to comfort this person. It's not about me, 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 me. That's boasting. 2 Corinthians 11.23 And we're here again. Paul's boasting and boasting is foolish. But it's for their rebuke he's using it. He is fighting fire with fire. He's that verse we read about the answer is not a full according to his folly, the answer a full according to his folly. I'm going to use your foolishness to show you a lesson. I'm looking back here where it is. Uh, Proverbs. So much in Proverbs. Right here, Proverbs 26 4. Answer not a fool according to his father, at least also be like I know. Don't answer with foolishness. That's what Paul's doing. Proverbs 26 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, at least thou be also like him. Alright, don't answer by the foolishness, but look. Verse 5. 26 5 Proverbs. Answer a fool according to his folly. Answer a fool foolishly, and he will not be any wiser. Paul is using their tactics. I'm going to have you eat your own words. I'm going to have you eat crow. And I don't think Paul's sinning. You, you're Hebrews? Fine, so am I. Are you so well great? Did God speak to you, give you revelation? Or did you learn the revelation from me? Paul. 
So. Lost my place here. Second Corinthians twelve six. Took myself up here. Apologize. For though I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should should think of me above that which he sees me to be, that he heareth of me. Paul says. I was going to glory. I was going to glory. I was going to. I was going to be thankful. I was going to be. Oh my glory! He says, "Nope, that's a sin. That's foolish. That's foolish. Seeking glory is foolish. Seeking the glory of other men, save the loss, is foolish. And then that would make people think more of you than what you are." And I definitely have one man in picture right now. Not two. Maybe three. His own glory and how great he is. Move on. That's my sin. Verse 11. From 2 Corinthians 12. 11, I am become a fool in glory. See? Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been com commended of you. They're condemning him, not commending. For in nothing I am behind all the chief apostles, though I be nothing. You have made me sin. Verse 11, chapter 11. I spoke of myself, I bragged of myself, and now I've got to confess it as a sin. Churches and Christians are doing that worldwide today. Look at us. Look how wonderful we are. Some of them act like no one else is doing what they're doing. That's glory. That's foolish. So, and then we're going to stop there. But I think, you know, that's a pure subject right there. It's a sin. An outright sin. Boasting and glorying is a sin. 